Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Tuki Asban Senova and, and I welcome you again on my channel, I'm Dr. Tutsi. Today I would like to present you uh, my clinical case uh, about Kestenbaut Anderson procedure in a patient with isotropia, nystagmus and abnormal head deviation. So let's start a little bit about nystagmus. Nystagmus comes from the Greek word nystado, which uh, means sleepy. Definition of nystagmus uh, is the rhythmic oscillation or tremor of eyes occur independently of normal movements, usually of near equal amplitude in each phase and may occur in one or both eyes. But usually, of course, uh, it's mainly in both eyes. Description. When we describe nystagmus and usually and actually when I was on my residency course, um, every time when I had to present a patient with nystagmus, I had to totally give a, a right and correct description because it was not enough for my supervisor and I think this is the, how it should be actually uh, to say that the patient has nystagmus. I had to give the proper definition of uh, and description of uh, what the patient has. So when we describe nystagmus, we have to talk about the movement, which can be pendular or jerk uh, with a slow and fast component. Then we uh, have to mention about the horizontal and vertical uh, direction and additionally torsional or combined direction. We talk about the amplitude, uh, frequency and manifestation. And in terms of manifestation, nystagmus can be manifest, latent and manifest latent. Uh, there is a, in this slide, for example, we can see a clinical classification of nystagmus, which can be physiological and pathological. Pathological includes congenital and acquired, and there are uh, a few forms of each um, types. And clinical characteristics. Nystagmus characterized with uh, low visual acuity, abnormal head deviation, strabismus, and as I already said, it can be manifest, latent, and manifest latent nystagmus. And of course, it's not always when nystagmus uh, has uh, abnormal head deviation or uh, associates with strabismus. And let me tell, tell you just a few words about abnormal head deviation. So what is that? This is the point and of nystagmus when it reaches the less frequency of eye movement and uh, it can be the uh, the patient is choosing for himself the best the best uh, position where he can see better for example it can be chin up chin down position or head turn to the left or to the right so it depends but of course it's not always there are a lot of uh, cases when the patient has nystagmus without any abnormal head deviation and let's start with the clinical case uh, of my patient so this patient was a male patient 10 years old and the main complaints of his parents was that um, uh, the kid is not looking straight First of all, he's always trying to look like from the side. This is how her mother was complaining. She said that uh, she's watching TV and always turns his head in a very funny position. And I'm always scolding him that he has to look straight. And additionally, he has uh, squint eyes and he's wearing glasses. So these were the main complaints of his mother. Uh, after a uh, total examination, uh, visual acuity, and as I already, you already also understood, the patient had abnormal head deviation. So, and we checked uh, visual acuity of the patient with and without um, head deviation. So here on the slide, you can see that UDVA, which is uncorrected distance visual acuity, without abnormal head deviation was 20 to 50, and corrected visual acuity was 20 to 40. And with abnormal head deviation, uh, the visual acuity was better. Uh, uncorrected distance visual acuity was 20 to 40 and uh, corrected was 20 to 32. From the refraction of the patient, you uh, may pay attention on the astigmatism which the patient has and also that on the left eye, the astigmatism number is pretty high. Of course, uh, we can't say that this is the absolute uh, number of the refraction because uh, it's a 
boy, it's a kid uh, with nystagmus, it's a bit hard uh, to fix the head, to fix the, um, the and to look straight in case of nystagmus and get the uh, proper fixation in order to make the examination properly but uh, of course after getting this number of astigmatism we get uh, we got a bit uh, suspicious and topography examination was of course uh, performed additionally regarding the strabismus i want to say that degree of uh, strabismus was uh, 30 prism diop uh, 30 pd and with and without glasses, it was the same for near and for far distance. Additionally, and uh, abnormal head deviation was uh, to the left and uh, look was to the right. So the turn was to the left and the patient was looking to the right like this. Yeah, and this is topography image. As you can see here, uh, this is a typical uh, topography image of the cornea and on the left eye we got the keratoconus diagnosis stage 2. Of course in this case uh, and in this age um, not much we can do and the only thing of course it's a uh, dynamic control uh, and to control and uh, yeah and hopefully that it will just stay constant or stable uh, without any uh, progression. So we decided not to perform any treatment like cross-linking for example for the kid and just decided to keep it uh, for the proper uh, dynamic control. This is ophthalmoscopy examination which didn't show any pathologi uh, pathological changes and diagnosis. So this all examination shortly um, which I presented you um, gave us the possibility to diagnose the patient with the myopic uh, astigmatism, congenital manifest latent horizontal nystagmus, alternative isotropia, ab abnormal head posture and additional keratoconus. Uh, why uh, we consider that this congenital? Because the mother mentioned that the shaking of his eyes was uh, since of his born and isotropia as well and he was not uh, uh, he, uh, he didn't get any surgical treatment before only uh, glasses so in this case our purpose was uh, to correct strabismus and to correct abnormal head deviation and for that we decided to perform Kestenbaum Anderson procedure. So what is Kestenbaum Anderson technique? In 1953, Anderson and Kestenbaum independently suggested that abnormal head deviation, which is related to nystagmus, could be treated surgically. Kestenbaum, he offered the surgery on all four horizontal muscles. And later, Anderson uh, proposed uh, the recession of the pear rectus muscles. And in 1973, Parks suggested his memorable uh, classic numbering of the procedure, which was 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, so the theory underlying this procedure is that in case of an eccentric nystagmus, the position of balance between the opposing muscles can be gained only by, by conjugate deviation. Therefore, if the muscles which uh, bring the eye in the position of balance are weakened surgically and the contracting muscles are strengthened, the impulse for conjugate deviation will rotate the eye to or near the mid position. For example, I can just uh, uh, try to explain you this easily. For example, if my head um, turn to the right and I look to the left, uh, so in this case, right rotators, which are right lateral rectus and left medial rectus, they should be uh, they uh, should be stronger and the left rotators which are left uh, lateral rectus and right medial rectus they should become weaker in this case uh, the head will be just automatically turned to the mid 
position and the eye will be just in the mid uh, or near to the midline uh, position. So in this case, the patient will get the better visual acuity with a lower uh, frequency of nystagmus and with a proper head position. So this is like a base main theory under this procedure. So, uh, and as you can see in this slide, uh, these numbers, classic numbers, 7658, uh, uh, which uh, was offered by Parks, but of course these numbers are not always uh, in use. Many surgeons, they can just uh, change these numbers um, depending on the case. So in my case, since it was not only nystagmus patients, it was patient with strabismus, nystagmus and abnormal head deviation. So I had to de uh, decrease the frequency of nystagmus by putting the head in the right position, let's say like that, and uh, additionally correct to, nystag uh, to strabism correct strabismus, I'm sorry. In that case, I've researched a bit and I read a few articles regarding this case and I ended up with the point that in the eye where the strabismus appears, the number should be taken based on the degree of strabismus. So since I had 30 degree, I decided to uh, take uh, on the left eye like a five millimeter recession and a six millimeter resection. And yeah, this was my decision. Uh, uh, in this additional uh, slide, you also uh, can see like a nomogram, which you can use in your uh, practice based on the uh, degree of head turn. And uh, yeah, we, where you can just add um, more numbers in order to recess or reject the muscle so it's just of course we don't use always normograms every surgeon i'm sure has his own normogram uh, it's not like yeah i'm using a kenneth wright normogram or kestenbaum anderson or yeah kestenbaum normogram or whatever every surgeon based on his own experience and long experience of course has his own normogram but I think this uh, at the beginning of the practice or at the beginning of strabismus surgery, it's always good to make um, to take numbers and to uh, refer to normograms. And this is um, after surgical uh, follow up period. Here on this slide, for example, you can see that uh, the photo on the top is a one month outcome and the photo. Uh, below it's like six months uh, follow-up with and without glasses. Of course, if you see a little bit uh, very attentive, you can uh, maybe realize that there is still a little bit uh, strabismus, but, and yeah, during examination, we uh, determined 5, uh, 10 prism diaptery isotropia. And with glasses, it was uh, really less visible, but uh, the position was almost ortho, uh, visual like The main thing that with the normal head position, without abnormal head deviation, the visual acuity was 20 to 40 uncorrected and 20 to 30 corrected uh, visual acuity, which actually is the same with the visual acuity which was uh, before surgery with abnormal head deviation. So based on this outcomes, we just uh, got all the results which we needed. And uh, the main thing that the patient was pretty confident because he was not trying to move his head all the time when he was uh, trying to see something better. He was just always straight and he changed. He became more confident. And the main thing that the parents also were very happy and the mother was totally satisfied and was really happy that she decided uh, to go for a surgery because before the surgery, of course, I explained about the possible outcomes um, Which may be I told her that there may be a very good uh, outcome. There may be just a little bit of changing uh, of um, and Improving the condition or there is additionally also a case where their improving might not be Yeah, it is very sad, but I think it's uh, good when we uh, just tell the patient the truth
And yeah, and summary of this case is that the effectiveness of kestem bone anderson procedure in this patient with isotropy and nystagmus and the normal head deviation was uh, again confirmed. And I'm happy that in my case and in my experience, I had this um, very successful uh, clinical case. And this is it. Uh, I hope it was interesting for you and I would be very happy to read uh, your comments about this clinical case or to read about your own experience about the patients uh, like this with nystagmus, abnormal head deviation and strabismus or just in general if you had a patient with this procedure for nystagmus uh, patients. I would be very happy to read your uh, comments and um, points. Thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you again on my next videos. I'm wishing you a good day. Bye.